Hi gang, Rob here. It's the evening of 5 September 2017, the eve of my 52nd birthday. I don't feel a day over 51. Yeah. So on this day before my birthday, I thought I'd just maybe do a little from the sharpening bench video for you guys. <clears throat> and this knife is sort of indicative of a trend I'm seeing in the modern folder market. A trend to be expected. The knife is from Kershaw in that classic red and black box with this awesome sticker on one end proudly made in the USA. I just love this product line. The US made Kershaw product line not Chinese Kershaw's, not zero tolerance knives, but American made Kershaw knives. I love them. They're super well made. They're starting to use a variety of really high quality steels and they won't break the bank. The particular knife we're looking at tonight <coughs> is indicative of a trend because of almost every state in the union relaxing or eliminating Laws against automatic folding knives, switchblades. There are a bunch of new autos on the market this year for a lot less money than we used to see them. They're no longer these unicorns that only really strange knife people own or military operators. Now, auto knives are kind of for everybody. You know, this is a right-handed knife, but it does have a tip up or tip up right or left hand clip, and my right thumb is still a mess. So we're gonna kind of feature the left hand tonight. This is the Launch 7. It is the latest in a line of seven launch series knives from Kershaw. This one fresh from the sharpening bench with an Apostle P edge. Look at that blade three and three quarters by manufacturer's listing, three and eleven sixteenths by my measurement of blade, and I got a big spot on this thing. I've got to get rid of that. It's going to drive me absolutely nuts if I do not get rid of it. I've got to get rid of it. Okay. You know, there's fingerprints on a blade, and then there's black splotches on a DLC blade, all that drive me up the flipping wall. Okay. Taken care of. Sorry about that. A, a brief look into my obsessive compulsive nature. <clears throat> That's better. So three and three quarters inches, we'll call it, of a pretty sexy sort of harpoon clip point blade. I think you can make out a very skinny flat that runs from the base of the blade up to where the swedge intersects with the primary bevel and then that sort of pyramid shaped swedge. Just a super skinny, super slicey, super pointy clip point blade and a switch blade and automatic knife, just what the doctor ordered this blade fashion of a steel that I don't think gets enough love CPM 154 the crucible particle metallurgy version of 154 CM it's just a super awesome sharpenable good edge retaining very stainless knife steel you know it's not it's not a ridiculous edge holder that makes it hard to sharpen but it's good enough you know it's Certainly a notch above, like a Sandvik 14C28N. I think it's very, very similar in how it behaves to the user and the sharpener to S35VN. Maybe not quite the edge holding, but a little more sharpenability. Good stuff. And then you've got that gorgeous Kershaw black DLC coating. Wears like iron. Looks great behind that gorgeous blade and it is a super slicey work of art let me tell you just have to show you it's uh -huh. that was even at a bad angle there 
Love it. Love it, love it, love it. This is kind of an everything knife. But behind that gorgeous blade, which is a work of art, congratulations, Tim Galleon, designer of the Launch 7. You killed it. Behind that blade is this handle. Now, it's sort of geometric looking. It's sort of termed, characterized by the <coughs> the marketing people at Kershaw as an industrial theme. I get that. We've got some sort of geometric milled cuts in the underside of the handle. Then the FRN backspacer has some holes, some more holes in the front in this recess. You know, not, not that I can really make sense of a lot of this. Purely stylistic. You know, not a lot of function going on with any of that, but it does make it look cool, and I think the handle flows with the blade. Other than the graceful curve of that perfect belly, it's kind of the only curve on the knife. So the geometric shape of the handle makes sense, I think, and it doesn't hurt the ergos of the knife, which are excellent in the saber grip. It is money. And with your finger in this deep finger groove in the handle, the thumb is perfectly comfortable hanging out in this rearward position on the thumb ramp above the deployment button. Without moving the index finger, the hand can sort of pivot, and we can use this swale in the top of the blade on the spine for powerful cutting with the base of the edge. No problems. Hammer grip, it's comfortable. Draw cut grip, it's comfortable. Not, You don't feel like it's just absolute nirvana in your hand in those grips, but it's good. In the reverse grip, the, the thumb kind of searches for a comfortable spot on the butt of the knife, but you don't really need the thumb. You could almost wrap the thumb like this because the pinky is so well encompassed by that finger groove. You could comfortably stab from that grip right there. So although the handle is a bit over stylized for my taste, it doesn't hurt the ergos. The material of that handle is aircraft grade aluminum, hard anodized in a very attractive gray. Has sort of a blasted finish. <clears throat> a nice reverse American flag stenciled into that anodized finish. The hardware is blackened. The clip is blackened. I don't think it's painted. It might be kind of a, a matte or satin finish paint. It doesn't look like it's DLC coated. You guys will have to let me know how those are wearing. The mechanism is a coil spring automatic uh, deployment by button. That button also functions as the outward extension of the button lock mechanism. You can see it move. Very simple, very secure, a very reliable locking mechanism, and it makes a really nice fast auto when you wrap a coil spring around that pivot. And you can see with my left hand, um, you know, your grip is a little different, so not quite as secure, but you can see that knife move in my hand. I mean, it, it comes open with authority. That is an important point we'll get into as we talk about the rest of the launch series. Just a big, nice, but not overly obtrusive auto knife. Large EDC, medium sized tactical, you bet. Let's see blade play. We have zero vertical and we have zero side to side with apparently a pretty free action. Mm -hmm. Now, there obviously have been six launches before the seven, and some of them, if you've paid attention to the history of the launch series at all, you know had issues with lockup. And by that I mean, you deploy the knife, and it would bounce off the stop pin and sort of stop in a position like this. It wouldn't lock fully open. Um, some of those earlier knives in the series had sort of a combination of factors 
that weren't executed very well. Um, if you would, if the if you would adjust the pivot to a very free state, meaning maximum velocity as it hits the stop pin, uh, that was a contributing factor. The other one was that those knives sort of ran out of gas as far as the spring goes at about this position. So the knife was almost free between the stop pin and let's say 10 degrees down. So it was able to actually bounce off the pin and have no spring tension sucking it up against the pin. That coupled with a very free pivot sort of put the knife out of time and you had issues. This launch seven is adjusted very freely but as you can see a very good amount of spring tension holding that knife in the fully extended position okay so if I take my finger off the button there's just absolutely no issues with that knife locking up I have not been able to make it fail um, you know even for the knives that had that problem you know if you put a little extra tension on the pivot to take away the bounce make it hit the stop pin with a little more damped force most of those knives are able to eliminate that issue and when we think about the price point of the launch series at right around a hundred bucks some a little under some a little over you know you can forgive that a little bit I think that said I think we're gonna see over the next year or two all automatic knives come way down in price and Benchmade has a whole stable of new ones this year that are, you know, all of them start with a one in their pricing. You know, it used to be a Benchmade automatic started in the 200s and went up into the 400s. And most of their new offerings, all under 200 bucks. Let's see, what other dimensions haven't we talked about? Blade stock. 120 thousandths, just under an eighth of an inch. Handle thickness, about 465 thousandths, under half an inch. The weight on this three and three quarter inch bladed auto knife, 3.25 ounces. Are you kidding me? Let's see how bad my thumb is. But that is an amazing package. I mean, we're talking bench made 940 size efficiency. And guys, regardless of whether it's an auto knife or a manually deployed knife, Let's not forget in this uh, age of titanium and carbon fiber that a good old hard anodized aluminum handle does a pretty good job in strength to weight ratio. And I think they're kind of comfortable to hold. I just love the feel of a, a nice bead blasted hard anodized aluminum handle. And as you uh, use them and wear them, you're edges wear through and they get shiny and they get some honest wear you can tell that a working man owns them nothing wrong with that kind of like snail trails in a sabenza now I've got to say this is probably not a knife I'm gonna buy this one belongs to my customer Scott who after after a year or so kind of chilling on the knife collecting he is back with a vengeance this is one of his new acquisitions but just from a styling standpoint probably not a knife I'm gonna buy however I sure think it's cool but you know we can't just buy every knife we think is cool I sort of have you know I'm a knife collector on a budget just like you guys are I sort of have to wait look at them for a while consider them for a while think about if they're going to be significant in the long term and then you know after i've sharpened a couple and got to test drive yours then i pull the trigger this is probably not one i'm going to pull the trigger on but i sure think it's cool if you own it and if you love the looks of it fire away i say because it's a nice knife. It really, really is. You go, Kershaw. I mean, I'm looking forward to like the Launch 34, right? If they make a Launch 34, I'll buy it. It's Walter Payton's number. Yeah, the great one. 
If they make it to 34, I'm buying a 34. There might be a couple others along the way that I wouldn't mind having. But the 7 is a pretty cool knife. That's what's neat about the launch series. There's got to be one in there that you like. And probably, as of September 2017, if you live in one of these 50 free states of the United States of America, you can probably own and carry one legally. Very cool. That's all for this one, my friends. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word. And Scott's launch seven are sharp. <laughs>